Welcome to Vibes of India. I'm John V. We are at Symposium 2022, a flagship program by BNI. And I'm sitting with founder and director of BNI Ahmedabad, Yash Vasant. Welcome, Yash, to Vibes of India. Well, thank you very much, John V. It's a pleasure to be here. Yeah. Yes, tell us something about Symposium 2022 and what it is all about. Well, you know, BNI is, uh, it's been eight years for BNI and Ahmedabad. And BNI is a celebration of every business person that has ever come out of this great city. Um, and as you know, and, and Ahmedabad's known for this entrepreneurial spirit, but eight years ago, it was tough to kind of build this. Today, we are the single largest, most engaged organization in the world. Not New York, not Los Angeles, but Ahmedabad. And the symposium is a celebration of that. So today, we have about 2,000 people, uh, members as a part of it, and 5,000 people in and out coming in to see the exhibition. Uh, we have a one-to-one -one conclave, which is a very special thing because so many times we don't know who's sitting next to us. And the idea is uh, essentially like speed dating, but you get to do what, what we call snap one-to-ones, where you get to meet someone for five minutes, you talk for five, they talk for five, and you initiate the process of building a relationship. You know, it's not a relationship, but it's the process has started. Um, and then followed by the exhibition. And today was amazing because we had Kabir Bedi and our uh, Honorable Chief Minister join us, which was absolutely incredible. Which are the businesses that we expected for this event? So one of the beauties of BNI is that in any chapter, only one business category can be represented. So the beauty is that we have, we're, we're not doing with business with people who we know. We're doing with business with people who we know, like, and trust because they each come from a different background, a different experience, a different culture, and a different business category. So today you'll see... Uh, a plethora of uh, members, uh, you know, from uh, uh, building materials to printing to factories who manufacture machinery, like very uh, cutting edge machinery to startups. There isn't more weightage on one. However, there's a weightage on MSMEs in general uh, in BNI Ahmedabad. And yes, uh, as someone who is heading BNI Ahmedabad, you have great insights into various businesses. Would you want to highlight any of the issues that uh, business houses are facing here, be it due to increase in GST or the increase in reported by RBI, any, anything? You know, it's, uh, it's incredible that you mention it because I, you know, I didn't build BNI Ahmedabad. BNI Ahmedabad built me because I get 2,000 people to learn from. However, in terms of insights, we don't, uh, you know, really get into uh, policy making, so to say. However, uh, one of the common things that comes up across the board when members come to see me or we talk businesses um, is the amount of compliance that is now required, which I believe is a great thing. Uh, but the amount, in, for some people, it's tough to catch up to the GST requirements and to the amount of compliance is changing across the board, even for uh, basics, uh, such as setting up a new company. And the one major concern right now is the uh, the, the website uh, uh, for the uh, to set up a new company, etc., is down for the past two months, and people haven't been able to register new companies across the country, uh, which is a problem that we're facing. And uh, tell us, uh, like, what next for BNI in the sense, like, are, are there any upcoming events? Is there anything else we're expecting? And awesome. So upcoming uh, in uh, September, we have the first night of BNI in Ahmedabad. The first Navratri is the BNI Navratri. So that's coming up. However, in terms of events and activities, we, uh, we, we will be 5,000 members in the next three years. Uh, and we aim at closing 10,000 crores of business amongst the members itself. And this is not an MOU. This is real business done by real members, which we're really proud of. Is there any approx business we are expecting from this symposium? Absolutely. So we tracked uh, two years ago because of the pandemic, we weren't able to do an in-person meeting. Uh, two years ago when we did, um, we were able to close predicted business of over 350 crores. And this event, we estimate possible transactions of upwards of 400 crores to take place. And uh, what do you see, like how is Gujarat developing? Like, Gujarat is always known for enter entrepreneurship, but is there anything else that you know you would also want to highlight? I, uh, you know, I, I like Gujarat because uh, through some other businesses of mine, I've been able to, for the, past uh, for the past three years, really experience other cities of India, other states of India. And what I find in Gujarat is people are less likely to deal or, or get into things that don't matter and they focus on brass tacks. They, they, they want to talk about the money, they want to talk about the business and they want to get it done. And I think that kind of spirit is what makes us who we are. And yes, I was talking to some of the businessmen and they told me that uh, due to a uh, dearth of labor, they had to shift their uh, companies from Gujarat to somewhere in Maharashtra. How, how do you think? Uh, what do you think about this problem? And it's been crazy. You know, we've always had labor coming in from outside, right? Uh, UP, Rajasthan, so on and so forth, Bihar. 
Um, and currently, it's just been this big shift. And I've seen a lot of large manufacturers kind of have to shift base. I, Since I am not a manufacturer myself, I will not comment on it. All I will say is um, I think there's a little bit of a tweak that we can do in... Um, certain simple policies uh, which will ensure that the labor stays in Gujarat and we get them back. That's all I'll say. And yes, Gujarat is also becoming a hub of for startups. Yes, but do you think it's a bubble which is going to burst? Like, what are your views on the startup business in Ahmedabad? You know, so first, I think startups in India. This is our era. I will say this as honestly as I can. I think up till now, we've had startups, but these are copycats. These are things just coming out. I've not been a fan. However, recently, I have about 38 startup investments that I have, and Indian startups are now beginning. I think the next 10 years are the era of India. And Gujarat, of course, is going to be a part of it. Now, earnestly, uh, the, the lack of, uh, uh, you know, nighttime activities in Ahmedabad uh, or in Gujarat uh, dissuades certain kind of IT professionals, etc., to come in the city. However, with Gift City coming up and with the kind of thought process that exists now and the kind of money I'm seeing flow, Gujarat will have some incredible startups. Great. And yes, there's also an observation that when we see someone like Elon Musk or Jeff Bezos, like we see uh, them investing in tech or IT related uh, startups. Do you think the same is happening with startups in Gujarat? Man, absolutely. In fact, I, most startups, you know, will tend to be towards the tech side because even if, you know, the concept is disruption and disruption happens when you take something which is ordinary, you convert it into, extra, into something extraordinary by putting in that tech aspect which didn't exist, whether you're aggregating or building something brand new. Uh, so 100%, there's, there's a big shift towards investments in tech. Uh, and as an investor myself, I'll tell you, it's because of scale. Because all you're looking at is scalability and, and technology allows you to scale. So there's no doubt in my mind a smart investor is investing in tech. And yes, lastly, tell us that if someone is coming to Symposium 2022, what will be the biggest takeaway? Man, first, uh, uh, the biggest takeaway would be, oh my God, this is crazy. Because I don't think, um, uh, you've seen exhibitions in Ahmedabad. If you see something like this, you're, you're in awe. The, the room's beautiful, you see the size, the grandness. Yeah, and, and the biggest takeaway, though, would be that it isn't the exhibition that people are coming to. The one-to-ones that are happening, the interaction between one human being and another human being, and hence the relationship made, is, I think, the greatest investment of man. So, if you had me investing in relationships or technology, I'd still pick relationships, and I think that is the biggest takeaway of BNI. Thank you so much, Yash, for sharing your insights and for uh, your time. Uh, for more such interviews, keep watching Vibes of India. Thank you. Yeah.